Hello guys and welcome to another video. So I'm currently on route to my friend and ex-colleague Jan Verhulst who has a Model 3 because my hardware tree upgrade will only happen on Wednesday. But uh, yeah, we wanted to take the time and totally test the speed sign recognitions. Um, we're going to do a couple of traffic situations, a couple of things that I think it might not do right, but I might be pleasantly surprised. And of course, we are going to trick the system as well by creating our own speed signs with uh, some really cool ideas to see what the car actually thinks. So that should be a lot of fun. So, okay, first test. Let's see what the normal sign recognition does. We got signs on both sides of the road here. And on the back of that truck as well. Does he recognize that? Nope. With Autopilot 1, that uh, sign on the back of the truck was sometimes recognized. Here we have a sign 50. On the left side there's 110. He sees the sign, but he does not apply it to the car. So currently you see that the car is thinking we can do 70 here. That is probably because of the database behind it because this this road used to be 70 kilometers an hour. It has been reduced over the last two three months to 50 kilometers an hour. Now on the left side we had the 90 sign and I was going back to 50 again because on the right side there was another sign. Um, so it's taking signs from both sides of the road, whereas legally the right side is the only uh, mandatory sign and the left one is just a repeating sign to help you visualize better. But this time we have another road um, on the left side and yeah, for them it's the right side and the correct side to indicate 90 kilometers an hour. So still a little, little bit of confusion when we have multiple roads so close to each other. So here again on the right side we have the sign for 50. He sees it and applies it. On the left side we have a sign for 70. What does he do with that? He applies it as well. On the right side another 50 sign so and then he applies it as well. So he's actually reading too many signs and or applying too many signs at the moment causing for a little bit confusion. This is a highway sign. What does he do with that? Nothing. He doesn't recognize the highway sign. He did recognize the 90 kilometers an hour, which is correct. But the 20 meters before that sign, theoretically, you could do 120 kilometers an hour. So up ahead we have the dynamic speed signs. Now let's see if the car displays them. We're already doing 100, but uh, let's see if the car displays them. Nope, it does not seem to recognize those signs. Here another attempt, more signs. There's one at the top for three and a half tons also, but nope, nothing recognized here. Cool car on the right side with some bullhorns on the hood. <laughs> now here we have the overhead signs with a green arrow. Now if you look on the dash, those green arrows are displayed as traffic lights. It doesn't pull a stop line there, but uh, the question is of course, what would happen if one of those green arrows becomes a red cross? Now up ahead we have a double sign where the bottom one is only for trucks or semis. And let's see how the car reacts to that and which of the two he will actually take. Right now it's 90, the bottom one says 70. He only sees the 90 sign and completely ignores the 70 kilometers an hour sign. 
So the question is, does he always take the top one? So here again, 70. He doesn't read it because probably there is the limitation, the blue sign underneath it that says it's only four plus 3.5 tons. So next what we want to test is, will it recognize the start of the city center where uh, legally you can only drive 50 kilometers an hour. Um, this is already a 50 km an hour road at the moment but will it recognize the sign and the sign is the white rectangle with the uh, city or street or village name so here we have it does it recognize anything nope not a single sign that is being recognized so the car would still slow down probably based on the database data uh, but it does not recognize that specific sign so next is the speed zone so here we have a zone of 30 kilometers an hour which is common around schools uh, in Belgium he sees the start of the zone but now he already changed it to 50 kilometers an hour I know that autopilot 1 had some problems with recognizing the end of the zone because that's the sign you see up ahead which is uh, completely gray let's see if he recognizes anything yep he does recognize the end of that specific speed area so yeah that's good apparently in the previous update which was uh, 2020.3 36.3.1 uh, it didn't do that so we already got a couple of improvements in the current update so that's good so here we have a small sign that he doesn't recognize uh, but this sign for 30 kilometers an hour is only for three and a half tons he recognizes it and applies it to the car So I think we can do some uh, testing with two signs on top of each other and see which one he actually takes. So now he thinks it's 50 again. Will he apply the 30 kilometers an hour again here? Yes, he recognizes the sign and says we can only do 30 anymore. Now on the right side we have a zone sign again but it's just behind the corner does he recognize it no nope, it didn't see the sign so my question here is also does he or doesn't he use the side view cameras or is it only the front cameras that are being used for speed sign recognition now these were the real traffic situations that we could find in the area where we were testing but you can only test so much with the real situation so we decided to create our own speed limit sign and i printed out some different speeds that we wanted to play with now first we have a control to see if the system actually reads this specific sign So now that we know that the speed sign reading actually works with our own sign, let's find out what happens if we place it underneath another sign without any additional information like for the plus 3.5 tons for example. Let's see what happens. Now both signs were recognized and because they were in exactly the same spot the car was always doubting between 30 and 50 and 30 and 50 and 30 and 50 which was uh, funny but understandable because he didn't know exactly which one was the right one. Now uh, let's move on and have some fun with a sharpie and try to 
make the 50 sign into a 150 sign. Now since that didn't really work, uh, we wanted to check whether it would read it while the car was stationary and that gave the funny result of a walking speed sign. So that was uh, funny to see. Now one final attempt is when I tried to use the Sharpie to make the one more clear and see if we could manually adjust a speed sign. Now that clearly doesn't work, so let's try a totally different number to see if we can still trick the system, maybe with the sign that is actually um, an existing sign. Now that worked, but if you look at it closely, the drawing skills had to be really good to actually trick the system. And probably as a driver, you might have been tricked as well. So uh, yeah, the system is not to blame there, but it is possible to use a Sharpie to turn 30 into an 80. Now let's see if we can find an Easter egg here. Now unfortunately we didn't discover an easter egg and it didn't read the sign uh, but let's try it one more time and this time with roadster speed. So I get the impression that non-existing signs are actually not being read which is a really good thing uh, but that means that there has to be a database behind it for each and every country to indicate which signs are actually uh, viable and which ones are not. So yeah, we had a lot of fun testing this and I think it's a really good first version of the speed sign reading, but it does need quite a bit of work because there are a lot of corner cases and complex situations, especially the matrix signs, the overhead signs, the dynamic speed signs those need to be read as soon as possible as well but i'm happy that we are finally getting in that direction because yeah as i said a few times already this is a mandatory thing for fsd to ever become a reality so yeah there you have it i hope you guys enjoyed it as much as i did and uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel because as of tomorrow i will have the hardware 3 and mcu 2 install which means that I'll have more possibilities uh, to test stuff and I will also be on top of the game again with the latest software updates and the latest features uh, to test them on my usual route and maybe gradually add some new data points because yeah, whenever we get to roundabouts uh, and stuff like that, uh, that will become really interesting. But for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.